really a pleasure for me to be here speaking about uh, Asa's birthday. I'd like to think how long I've known Asa, and it's really a too large number to be not to be embarrassed to say. Uh, so for me, Asa has always been the, uh, the example of what I want to be when I go out. So uh, 
I'm going to talk about edge reconstruction and time reversal and quantum bullet effect and edge reconstruction and time reversal breaking in uh, topological insulators. But I will start with uh, some long history, which will overlap a little bit what you heard uh, started yesterday, but uh, maybe emphasize the whole uh, physics part, physics aspect. So uh, this is the standard picture that uh, we know about the quantum bullet effect. And basically, this, this, all these physics appear simultaneously in, uh, in two papers in uh, in two papers in uh, uh, more than 20 years ago, and the idea was basically uh, the same. Uh, let's say that you are looking looking at the uh, system. Yes, let's let's say that you are looking at the system with the. Uh, in the quantum ball regime, and uh, let's say that uh, you know, only occupy a single lateral level, and uh, these are the energy states in some gauge, and you fill up all the states up to some thermal energy. So the occupation in, in this uh, K space is going to be basically one until up to some critical K, and then zero. And the density, you just have to convert this with uh, the wave functions, so there will be a width of the order of the magnetic length. So this will decay to zero on the on the uh, on the length scale, which is the magnetic plane. Now, uh, this system, in fact, is in some confining potential, right? And the confining potential is determined by external gate or uh, whatever, however you confine the electrons. And um, uh, basically, there is a positive charge that uh, defines the, the, the confining potential. And and if you think of electrons as a classical liquid. Basically, they have to obey some Poisson equation, and the first thing they want to do is to form a, a, a negative, negative charge liquid, which will uh, minimize the interaction, the Coulomb interaction, will basically neutralize the positive charge. So you can do this calculation. Let's say you have some kind of confining potential, and let's say that the positive charge, the, the um, uh, distributions that the electrons uh, want to have in order to minimize the Coulomb interaction will be something like this. So this is very far from that sharp distribution that um, uh, the electrons uh, have if they fill the land of the states in the land of level one by one up to them. Now if you, let's say, do a healthy focal approximation, which means that you either fill a state or not a fill a state, or not fill a state, then uh, basically the, the way to uh, get a, a density which goes, which is smaller than one, by filling only part of the states. So basically what will happen in the half effect approximation is that you will have uh, a, a region where half of the states are empty and half of the states are unfilled. And this is a, a, a solution of the half effect equation in, in, terms, in, in that uh, potential. So what you see here is that you have basically, and if you do, instead of half effect, you do an exact generalization of the system, you get something which is not sharp, but still you get something that goes down and goes up. Uh, what's interesting about this is the fact that this gives rise to additional edge channels. So an edge channel is basically a place where you can excite the system, you can add an electron, or take out an electron, or excite an electron, and this you can now can do not only here, as in the system with the sharp edge, but also here and here. And the same physics basically, I don't think you can see it on the screen, but uh, the same physics go for the two third uh, for the fraction quantum wave effect and for the two, ter two third system, which is the one that I studied, uh, where the density is assumed to. So the, the standard picture of the two third uh, ground state was that it, uh, it's a Laughlin wave function of one third embedded in the full lambda level. So the, uh, the system has basically the density is, is one up to the of the full lambda level. And then uh, there is a, a hole of one third uh, uh, all the way up to the, uh, the end of the Laughlin wave function. So the density in, in the occupation in uh, case space will go from two thirds to one to zero. That's the given type uh, wave function. Uh, but you see that even if you smear this out with the uh, magnetic uh, plane, so the density basically goes from two thirds to zero. It goes only on a, on a scale of one magnetic plane, 
in a smaller confining potential, you want a smaller uh, density drop. And what happens is that you nucleate a, a region of one third states, nothing one, one third set of edge. And now the density drops more smoothly. And in fact, such, a, 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 such new strips have been observed. Uh, for example, this is an experiment from Amelia Povis group, where at the edge of nuclear one, you can see nuclear one, two thirds, etc. Et uh, so this, this has been uh, like 20 years ago, more than 20 years ago. Why did we uh, return to it now? And uh, uh, I think you have mentioned a few of uh, what you might have learned. Uh, new data, uh, uh, but there is one, let me mention the three questions, the three uh, reasons we looked at that. Uh, one of them is this the fact that if you have a point contact, you pinch off the point contact, there is a plateau, which has already been seen a long time ago, at one there. And this was as we repeated in what is uh, The other is the fact that if you look at the effective charge, used by short noise, uh, then what, uh, the conclusion is that the effective charge depends on temperature and grows from one third at high temperature to two thirds at low temperature. And the third is the fact that we see uh, upstream neutral noise. And it means that we inject current here, the charge goes to this uh, uh, ground. But in fact, you see additional noise in the point contact, which uh, the uh, attributed to uh, heat or neutral mode that goes in this direction. And uh, as uh, I mentioned, there were various approaches to, to this, to the new third state in the past. Uh, in order to explain that uh, one, one third plateau, uh, it was conjectured that in fact the two thirds edge looked like two one third edges that are propagating in parallel. And then when you have a point contact, one of them is reflected, one of them is transmitted, and then you get a, a, a uh, I mentioned that the picture of the Gerbin and McDonald that basically uh, claimed that uh, uh, the two-thirds ground state is a, a one-third laughing state of holes in a full lateral level, and that leads to these counter-propagating edge states. And as you were mentioned yesterday, this leads to a conductance, a two-terminal conductance of four, of four thirds that uh, has not been observed experimentally. And then uh, this paper, famous paper by Ken uh, Fischer Kochinsky, resulted by saying that uh, by some kind of RG flow, you get a two-third, they combine to a charge state of two-third and an upstream neutral mode to neutral upstream neutral mode and it of course explain the existence of neutral mode but can you see if you do you make a point contact here you will not get a, a plateau and it doesn't also doesn't uh, explain the also the uh, uh, effective charge. Uh, there are some subtleties that uh, I will skip for the problems of time. Uh, so what we've done is basically took the more uh, uh, the picture that uh, was presented in this on paper, where we have four modes, and what you see, uh, this is answering uh, <laughs> Steve's question from yesterday. Uh, in order to have a smooth density in the real space, these three inner modes have to be very close to each other. I mean, this to have a sharp uh, density profile in the real space is costly in energy. So these guys, these three guys, are basically stuck together. However, the outer mode, uh, the distance of the outer mode from three inner modes depends on the confining potential. So it could be uh, farther away. Uh, so the, what, what we assume is that, that there is a, a, bear, a bear coupling between this mode and the three inner modes is weak. So uh, we do this uh, RG uh, calculation uh, in two, st two stages. First, we uh, basically do the RG in the uh, space of these three modes. And then you end up with the uh, calculation, which is very similar to the calculation that we've done before. And these three modes have uh, in, in, there is a region in real in uh, uh, parameter space where these three modes basically are uh, normalized to one, one third mode going in this direction and two counter propagating uh, neutral modes. Now, this, as I said, is a very small. Uh, 
bare value, but it's relevant in the RG sense. So at low enough temperatures, uh, what will happen is that this will be normalized and you get the standard uh, KFP uh, edge structure. So you see that uh, the, this picture does explain the, uh, the plateau because now you can have uh, this, all, all this group of modes can be reflected uh, at the point contact. It explains the crossover, it explains the neutral mode, so it looks very nice. And in fact, Moti has done uh, additional experiments recently, uh, which as, a far, as far as I know are still unpublished. So one experiment is uh, basically he looked at two point contacts in series, uh, both in the two third regime, and what do we expect? So uh, he has control over the transmission here and the transmission here. So we expect that as long as the trans transmission here is larger than one half, there will be a mode that is coming out of here and propagating here. And this mode will, when this transmission is larger than one half, this mode will give you a conductance of one half. And that's exactly what this is. So he increases the, uh, basically looks for different transmission values here. And he sees that as long as these three transmissions, uh, is, as long as this transmission is larger than one half, it doesn't really matter uh, when you, if they, this does not affect the conductance here, because there's, in, in all these situations, there will be a, a full mode, a one edge state that propagates here and comes in. This, was done for a system where the distance between the two point, point contact is relatively short. Now it takes the, exactly the same system, system, but now makes the two point contacts at a larger distance. And you see something very different. Now, instead of having those three guys going through here, independent of what the transmission here was, now he sees the transmission, the conductance through this point contact depends on what the transmission here was even when the transmission was above one half. And this is because, according to this argument, if the, if the uh, length field is long enough for these two guys to mix, eventually you are not left with the original mode that comes from here, but in fact you get the mixture here and the transmission is reversed. But he, 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 he went on to do even, with, in my uh, view, even more striking experiment. Uh, at least uh, the result was, and this was a single experiment. He looked at single point contact, and he looked what happens when he tune it so that the conductance will be exactly at the, uh, at, at the plateau. So the uh, transmission is one half, so you see that you have a, a conductance which is exactly one half. At the same gate voltage, he now measures the, uh, the nodes, the, uh, the neutral mode. So he, he basically op, uh, take the magnetic field in the opposite direction. So now he measures the upstream neutral mode. And what you see is that when you reach the plateau, the neutral, basically the thermo, uh, uh, transmission of the neutral mode drops to a very small value, which is exactly consistent with what you see here, because the neutral mode in our picture is carried by the inner mode. So when you are at the plateau and only the outer mode is transmitted, there is a, a should be a drop in the transmission of the material. Anyway, uh, so we wanted to do uh, additional calculations. So we thought, for example, what will happen in the uh, So at least in the, the situation becomes very interesting when you go to uh, the new equal zero state in the field, and at least in, in some this, this new equal zero state, depending on the value and direction of the magnetic field, can have various uh, 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 ground states, uh, uh, as was uh, studied in some detail in the group of, uh, 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 of uh, Gerardo Cabrera and everything. Uh, and the interesting regime is, for example, this regime where you form a ferromagnetic type uh, ground state. Then in the Fermi energy, what you see is you have an electron mode that propagates in one direction and the whole mode that propagates <coughs> in the opposite direction. So this is a picture from their paper where they say that there are opposite spins uh, basically propagating in opposite directions, which basically says that uh, opposite spins.
experience that of a supercritical field. So this is very similar to what we know, or what we expect from topological insulators. In topological insulators, at least in the, in the standard, the model, or the BC model, uh, you expect, due to time reversal symmetry, you should expect, uh, you expect that the, the, uh, you can basically model it by uh, having two lambda levels, lambda level of spin of neutral one for spin up, and lambda level of mu equal minus one for spin down. And this will generate basically two head states going in the opposite direction, and they are bound to be together by time reversal symmetry, because the model is time reversal symmetry. So now comes the obvious question, this, this calculation that was done by the people was done in, in the system with sharp edges. Now the question, what will happen if you put the system in a, uh, a confining potential which is not sharp? And uh, so what I'm presenting now is a healthy for calculation of this model uh, in some finding in, in, in a, a confining potential that is determined by some distribution of uh, uh, positive charge. So if the positive charge distribution is, is sharp, then you get exactly what you uh, get from the standard DC model, namely to the density of spin up and spin down at the edge goes to zero, uh, exactly as you expect from uh, each one having its own lambda level that goes to zero the same place. Now you start to make the, uh, the potential smoother, and you want the density to go down more smoothly. So the first thing that the, the solution that they can find is basically to separate the position where the lambda level, let's say, the spin up goes to zero to the position where the lambda level for spin down goes to zero. It's the same as if you have two lambda levels. If a u equal two and you put some confining potential, then you don't expect the two lambda levels to go to zero at the same place because you want the density to go down more smoothly. Here, uh, this, this uh, separation of the two lambda levels for spin up and spin down is of, of course leads automatically to break spontaneous breaking of time reverse asymmetry. Right? Because the, the now if you uh, make spin up to spin down you don't get the same state. And if you continue with uh, even smoother potential you get this reconstruction based separately for each lambda level. Uh, so this is a relatively simple calculation. You can do, uh, uh, so this is, as I said, as helped before. You can do exact angularization and you get results which are very similar. You get spontaneous time reversal symmetry breaking and you can follow how much, uh, what's the, the width of the string that is formed at the edge uh, as a function of the, the confining potential and you see this kind of Okay, so let me. Uh, okay, so let me just mention uh, uh, some other implications. So, as I said, time reversal symmetry is spontaneously broken, which allow uh, backscattering at the edge, which will say that the resistance should be higher than two is square over edge what actually has been seen experimentally for some of the uh, systems. Uh, one prediction is that you should get additional plateau if, if, you, if you have a point contact. And uh, then when you quench the point contact, you should get the plateau at one e square over edge. Otherwise, if you have time, no time reversal symmetry breaking, there should be no such plateau. Uh, this also means that you'll have a, a whole conductance, a zero magnetic field. Because you see one of the IR states is reflected and one of them is considered. Uh, you generate spin down because one of the spin directions is reflected, one of them is reflected. Uh, uh, now we skip this because of the run out of time. Let me just mention that uh, there is a more elaborate model to explain, to describe um, uh, uh, topological insulators, and that's the BHZ model. And, uh, one can do the same calculation within the BHZ model and get the right. And again, what you see there is that when you have a sharp edge, uh, this is the spectrum and this is the chemical potential. The chemical potential crosses the spectrum at two points, which are the edge states.
circuits, and now you make the potential smoother, what you see is that the uh, uh, spectrum bends so that uh, it crosses the uh, chemical potential in two additional points, and this leads to two additional head states, but these two additional head states are the same speed. So now you have, uh, again, spontaneous symmetry breaking Uh, so let me just summarize uh, the quantum whole regime. We show that uh, this is uh, edge reconstruction and it's consistent with the uh, data. And I think you by yesterday also discussed other implications of this model to the noise spectrum of uh, these uh, systems. And uh, we basically just uh, extended this uh, calculation to uh, the quantum spin ball effect which lead to quite a number of predictions which are easier, easy to verify whether or this physics is relevant there or is not. In the edge reconstruction, the Hutterfock allows for Wigner crystallization on the edge, or is it not? No. I mean, yeah. basically just saying you, you take the lambda level states as given, what is the combination of occupation that we minimize it? So you will. I mean, you've assumed that it's translationally invariant in the, in the, uh, along the edge, but there could be spontaneous, I mean, you would expect at some level that there would be, uh, you could call it data crystallization, or that there's sort of great symmetry uh, uh, in the, uh, there'll be some kind of perhaps periodic or maybe something quite uh, aperiodic because you're gonna mix together, and you have, you're, you're having various, uh, a series of, of counter propagating edge modes, and that typically is unstable. Let's thank uh, all the 